Hey everyone, Flying Dutchy here, and welcome back to The King's Dilemma Chronicles, where we are almost reaching the end, I think. I have no idea. And yeah, we are preparing a couple of things for the end, uh, the end chaos thing, what's going to happen. Uh, a couple of things need to uh, get two more rains, one more rain. This one needs two more rains, and then we have a lot of things that we did not unlock yet, so no idea how long that is going to take. Our goal is to get all these symbols in the lower part while making decisions for the story. Uh, we do have a little bit of money that we can use for these bigger ones. We will have to spend it at some point. We only have a couple of things. We have this one here. The Secret Correspondence. Thanks to the Cult of the Modera Dwindling. That's about her wealth. Uh, we have Garrison City over here in Vandis. Oh, we can maybe do that one. And we have Precognitive Rebellions. An Asher. He has predicted the fall of our kingdom. Let's see what that is. An Asher named Flavion has predicted the fall of our kingdom at the hands of an invisible threat. Given the current climate of tension, the Tribune thinks we should not publicly endorse him. Publicly endorse him. They are always right. They they see the right things. The Librarian Chancellor, however, rec uh, recommends we secretly assist him in interpreting his dreams. Interpreting his dreams. But this would be a costly endeavor. Do we help him? The gifted Asher reveal a mysterious threat. We should do this. We should absolutely do this because what they see always happens. So, and my, uh, and they say yes, most of the people. So, I think we should really do this. Flavian's visions reveal a truth that could have been dismissed as a child's myth if it wasn't carefully researched. With the assistance of other Ashes and by cross uh, referencing with the Chronicles of the Realm, a terrible truth emerges, which Flavian describes in a secret report entitled The Way Empires End. There is an ancient secret organization formed from the remnants of a great empire of old. They believe that the enduring lust for more power destroyed their home, and they are determined to maintain a balance among the many kingdoms. They communicate secretly in their ancient tongue, and the most important member members are marked with the glyph of a black dawn. Hey, there's the black dawn again. They also have a system of common signs to communicate with one another. Such a burning three windmills on a single road or releasing 81 white doves in a city. But we had windmills burned. Ooh. Boink. Now they are all yellow for some reason. I know no idea what that does. Alright. Interesting. We have a new one here about the rebellions. Oh, I think we already had this one. Um, we should do something that can lower this thing over here. Do we have that? We have something with money. Well, maybe we should do that one. Secrets from the far. Cost a bit of money, by the way. A naked corpse has been found in a swamp in the Duchy of Natar, near the Monastery of Lorraine. Some locals are troubled by the sun symbol branded on the skin of the corpse and demand answers. The royal marshal dismisses them as superstitious simpletion, sim simpletons and suggests we let it rest. Do we lodge an investigation about the corpse found in the swamp? Oh, that's annoying. Well... I think we will do this, because if I do this one, then this gets too far down, and we can put this thing down later, you know. It also only costs me two power. I don't want to put this further down, because then my, my balance is going down as well. My balance should go up a little bit, I think. Let's just do this one. The face of the corpse is disfigured beyond recognition, but the Librarian Chancellor finds clues regarding the sun mark that was spotted on the corpse while reading a tome about the history in the southern ivory desert. The symbol is associated with a power set to rise after the brightest white sun, able to restart time itself. 
Our investigation probably scared the culprits, though no other corpses are found in the following months. Okay. Hmm. And we have nothing new, so we cannot put this thing further down. Because we don't have anything of that anymore. Uh, we can put these ones up or this one down. Maybe we should do this one. Because that is about these two things. It's about a brothel. Oh. The guild mistress reports that a brothel run by Ashers in the outskirts of Vandis is acquiring more and more powerful customers. These Asher courtesans seem to possess the ability to anticipate their clients' most secret perversions. Some say it is an affront to decency. To decency, right? Uh, but it's also a booming business activity. Do we close the booming Asher brothel? If I... I don't think we're gonna close it then. Because if I do this one... If I do this one, this will drop to all down. But we will say no. We should not police our people's secret pleasures as long as they are consensual. However, some suspect that the council members themselves are not strangers to the to the debauched places. Visions of delight. <laughs> Since the first one was opened in Vendis, Asher Brothels proved extremely popular, becoming a new stable source of income from the kingdom. These people can actually see uh, what people like, because they have this vision. And we have a new one over here. About the garrison uh, city in Vandis again. It is with the... Um, what's it again, this one? Influence. And the flag one. I also have something with only the flag, but that costs 5 gold. I don't want to spend... Five gold. We can do this one as well. Let's do this one. Precognitive rebellions. Lieutenant Larzo of the army has been discovered to secretly be an Asher. He found a way to avoid the grey mark by keeping ash bread consumption at a minimum, but he still retains some divinatory powers and has risen rapidly through the ranks. Many soldiers now feel uncomfortable serving under him, and the High Commander recommends he be expelled, but his skills may prove to be useful. Do we dismiss him? Of course not! If we say yes, it would be perfect for us, but we will not do this, of course. Of course not. Because he's an Asher. Despite the lamentations of our soldiers, we rule that as long as they abide by the law, Ashers can serve in the army and even become officers. The discontent of a few people is well worth the potential advantages of, of divinating commanders. Yeah. Despite suspicion from his subordinates, the seer officer quickly rose through the ranks, sharing his valuable insight with the army. How far are you going down? Okay, that's completely fine. And now we have a new one about the flag. We still have nothing about the other symbol. So let's do this one. Secret correspondence. The king enters the council room, his face pale and tired, if he's not slept for a while. I came to a grave decision, he says. I have a dear friend that I trust completely. She knows a ritual that can make me immortal. We have read about this before. But to, per to perfect it, she needs some time. Eight young girls, yet yeah, you need to have, uh, you need to kill children, or something like that. And a quiet place to study and practice. So you see he's gonna kill eight young girls. I want your support. It sounds crazy, but he is the king. Do we comply with the king's will and entrust eight girls to him? <sighs> no. It's gonna cost me more power. No. For the king's own sake, we decide to reject his request. We can't allow him to be stained by such a crime. He 
mutters something about his impending death and leaves the room. After a while, the Chamberlain brings us a letter he secretly retrieved from the King's Chambers. It proves that Celestina and her followers were behind the file request. After refuse to hand over eight girls to a certainly grim fate, Celestina seems intent to proceed with her plan on her own. Sisters of the Unending, a heretical whatever. Comrades, begin causing havoc in the realm. Followers, I guess. Nobody knows where they are based, but we receive reports of their appearance in the strangest places seeking to acquire medical instruments like saws and scalpels. When cults start disappearing around the kingdom, many immediately assume they are responsible. The army is hunting them down and managed to arrest some. However, none of the captured sisters of the unending of the unending seem willing to reveal Celestina's plan. It's almost eclipse time, guys, and then I think the game's over. Well, not over yet. But then we get this disaster. Okay, we have this thing here about the same story, but there is no flag in it. There is no flag in this one. And there is no no uh, diplomacy knowledge in the other one, so there is nothing I can do with knowledge. I can try to put this one down. We can do that with this one, I guess. We still have some time, so we don't have to do the most ridiculous decisions yet. During the early chaotic days of their presence in Vendis, some of the soldiers sent to disband the defenders committed several justified acts of violence at the expense of innocent people. Yeah. They did. The victims demand justice, but the High Commander dismisses the episodes as regrettable, but accidental mistakes. An unfortunate side effect of the delicate situation. Do we punish the guilty soldiers? Oh. Ooh. I can't do this one, because I don't have enough power. I will have enough power if I bribe someone. But then I lose all my money. So... <sighs> I would love to pick this one, but I don't think we can. Well, we can. But we don't have to do it for our crown, so they are lucky, I guess. Given the difficult situation event is at the apex of the defender Defender's Crisis, it seems appropriate to turn a blind eye to such venial sins. The honor of the soldiers will not be tarnished, tarnished, but the Council's perceived lack of protection for the victims of abuse puts a pinch of salt on their still open wounds. Abuses of power. We didn't punish the abuses of power of our soldiers. And okay. Yeah, I would have picked this one, but it's really hard as a council head to do this when I need to do other things. <laughs> uh, um, is there anything else that I can put this thing in the right position? can do it maybe with this one. That's the only thing I can pick, really. Or I spent five gold. Maybe we should just spend five gold. You know what? A wave of violence. Sail, a merchant from Alwet, with a stylized sun tattooed on his wrist, is one of the most violent leaders of the defenders. Suspected of hanging at least five ashes in the past few months. The Tribune thinks a public execution would bring relief to the families of sales victims, but the first judge says we have insufficient evidence to incriminate him. Do we order the execution? Yeah, well, they have to say no. There can be no conviction without conclusive evidence. There can be no law if the lawmakers themselves don't abide by it. Sale is released with only a warning. Yeah. Tile separatists. Though we spare this punishment, Sale harangues his followers with accusatory speeches against the council. Sparkling an independence movement. Free Tyro. Becomes a worryingly widespread motto. King has life. And we have four in the right order. So we have now five and one. And we don't get anything new. Shoot. 
Must be because we are at the end of the story. If I do this one, I think we have a big chance of getting one out of the of the zone. So then we should not do that one, I think. Maybe we should just do this one. Donations to the cult of the mother are dwindling. The prior mother wants to give the option to, to believers of the mother to pay all of their taxes exclusively to the cult instead of the kingdom. No. Do we allow that to pay tax to the cult? No. I can't change it. No. You don't have enough resources. <laughs> well, I have no other... I cannot do anything else, guys, so... I don't want this. Temples become lavished in gold, attracting numerous followers and boosting the morale of the people. The royal treasury unfortunately suffers from a significantly reduced income. <laughs> it's exactly not what I wanted, but there we go. The ecumenical tithe we allowed to be established continues to cause a heavy drain on the royal treasury. What a disaster. And the king is still alive. I don't think I like that, really. We don't get anything else. We have these three things now. Flag and grain or wealth. Tower and flag. Let's do this one. A thief who calls herself Magpie claims that she found a very compromising letter from the king's exchange with Celestina. Where he questions established religious truth. She asks for an outrageous sum not to release it to the public. An act that would damage the, the credibility of the crown. Do we surrender to the blackmail? We have no other option. I can't do this one because we don't have enough power. So. And I have no money to bribe them. So I have to say yes. I have no power. We give in to the Magbuy's blackmail. Bringing 11 perfect diamonds to an agreed location. Where we find the incriminating letter. Its content is indeed damning, as the king expresses doubts about the very divinity of the mother. He even quoted the historian Herod's controversial theory that she was just a powerful ruler of a long forgotten empire. Once the rumor spread that we negotiate with blackmailers, we started to receive unwelcome criminal attention far uh, more frequently. <laughs> oh my god, the king is still alive. We have a new one. This one. An enemy clothed in shadow. We can only do these two. We can do the flag and the wealth. We'll do the flag and the tower. Let's hope they stay in. We want to abdicate, really. A plague hits, uh, hit uh, Laius in the Duchy of Olwyn. Promptly named the Red Scythe, the infections make people re re regurgitate blood until they die. Is that uh, leaking blood? At the potential cost of condemning the seemingly unaffected citizens, the holy attendant believes the entire city should be quarantined to prevent the plague from spreading. Do we quarantine the plague city, sacrificing the healthy citizens? Now I can choose a bit. And we are gonna do this one because... Well, I actually want to know what happens when we get all the way over there. I think we get two extra crowns. So... Then I have to pick this one and lose one more power. Because if we do this one, we will have... We will abdicate. So let's do this one. Maybe the king dies, but let's see. The infected believe they've been cursed. Then they start roaming the countryside around Laia, seeking a cause. In the nearby forest, the surprisingly discover a pit of containing 13 rotten corpses with greenish flesh and strange ritual markings inscribed on their skin. I suspect that the red scythe was not a natural illness. Without the afflicted being isolated, the plague spreads to the countryside around Laia's. Leus. 
Fortunately, the region is sparsely populated, so we avoid a mass pandemic. Okay, he died. Unfortunately, we get five and one. The king is dead. We have five and six now. And we get a rough start. Achievement. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I have no idea. Ooh. I hope I get more crowns, by the way. Um, so... I still don't know if I get this. Did I get a, Did I get the extra crowns? I guess I did. We can try to get the opulent bonus. But maybe we should just stay moderate. Can do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, we get all the bonuses. Okay, that's really good. Can we do something more before this game ends? Did we open something? Yes. Study techniques for extracting information. To open that one. Hire Larso as a high officer. That's the Asher one, right? Yeah. Love to do that one. And we can build metal worm catapults. Oh, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> I want that one. It can be completed in time. Similar firefighter squad. The team specializes in extinguishing fires. Their efficiency and reliability could be improved by providing them with large quantities of water. Mm-hmm. This takes one turn. This takes two turns. This takes one turn. I think I want him because he is an Asher. He can he can foresee everything. That's not I'm not gonna do these extra bonuses anymore. I think it's too late for these. To be honest, let's just commit to these end uh, end dilemmas or something. Let's get the uh, the high, uh, Laszlo. And I think we are going to build capital uh, metal worm catapults. Wasn't there something for free food that we need to do? No free healthcare, but how? Business and politics. I don't think I see anything to go to to health, free health, uh, free healing for everyone. I don't. I don't think I see that here. Hmm. Well, I think I'm still going for the catapults here. It turns out that it's going to be be a uh, very militaristic run. structures and tunnels can be good. I think we should just spend what we can. We can open this and then get maybe that one. Yeah. We will get the research uh, Libra's geology. No idea if that will be in time though. Free healing, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea how to get this then. And assert the dominion of knowledge over spirit. I think we went the wrong way with the story because we have a mixture at the moment. You are in the in the in the council. You are, you are, you are, and you are. We could get an alliance, but let's spend my money on Um Things need to click. We have only two things we can pick.
An enemy clothed in shadow, the Librarian Chancellor informs us that many children are being kidnapped from orphanages all over the kingdom. Rumors talk of a cloaked figure with a black circle painted on their mask. You could re re uh, relocate all orphans to a single large structure, but they could be better protected and educated. Yet it would be an extremely expensive project. Do we fund the construction of a centralized home for orphans? Oh. Well, it seems like that everyone wants this, so... And I agree. The colossal circular structure is erected just outside of Libra, at an enormous cost. Orphans from all over the realm are relocated to the new institute, a safe haven, where they will not only be better protected, but also educated and cared for. The new institution is dedicated to Aegna, the saint daughter of wisdom and education. I like it. The many lost children hosted at the great orphanage where cre uh, we created are not only protected, but also well educated, so they can contribute to the progress of the kingdom. Perfect. Well, there's only one thing we can click, so... An enemy clothed in shadow. Celestina sent us a sinister message. Des despite your opposition, I, ac I acquired the secret of immortality. My intentions are pure. And they only want what is best for the realm. Let me join the court and I'll make your ruler immortal. Keep fighting me though and the power of life and death shall be wielded against you. Oh my god. Oh my god. What are we gonna do now? Do we get her back? Do we go back with her? I actually want to. <laughs> she can make our king immortal, but... I don't know if we want to do that. Okay. She joins the court. She's always followed by eight girls. Shrouded in mantles and always silent. She's also accompanied by some of her... Acolytes. Acolytes. The sisters of the unending who seem to be entirely devoted to her. Many in the court fear that Celestina's unholy ways will corrupt the king himself, but our king is already idi an idiot. Uh, once Celestina arrives at court, we become more acquainted with her arts. When the shroud that masks one of our girls accidentally falls off it in the council room, she's revealed to be horribly disfigured, like a freshly dead corpse, with a large rupture in her torso. Look at this. Rumors of these hollow maidens spread, but the episode is too horrible to be widely believed and their true nature remains a secret shared by a few. Due to her composed ways and dazzling mind, on the other hand, Celestina proves to be quite charming and seductive guest. She claims that implementing the ritual won't be an immediate thing. She will have to spend a lot of time with the king and his closest courtier. courtiers. When she gives birth to an Illegitimate daughter, many rumor it's the fruit of an affair with influential dignitary quite close to the king himself. <laughs> we are almost there. Oh, I did not expect that to be that harsh. Oh, and now we have new things, so let's see what we need to do. We need to put this up. No matter what. It's just one story left, um, so we are gonna do this one then. It's gonna cost some money. The rector received an anonymous letter marked with a black circle containing an ominous warning. Creatures like the Hollow Maidens already existed in the past and whoever is accompanied by them, if not stopped, is bound to become the most powerful being in the world. Let us recommend we investigate an ancient monastery in Sid Lada. Do we send someone to investigate this? I can't do it. Oh, we are gonna lose anyway, because everything will get out of the, the thing. So it doesn't matter which one I pick, because uh, the king will abdicate anyway. They are both going down. Uh, so it doesn't matter, because this one will stay in. It will give me more black crowns, but no, we need some white crowns too. So we are gonna just say yes, and then abdicate. A small delegation of scholars is sent to the southern kingdom of Sidlada, which kindly allows us to investigate their monastery. Uh, the scholars find an apocryphal 
an apocryphal chronicles talking about the first king's campaign of conquest. They suggest Omad was aided in his epic quest by a few trusty champions, eight fierce and apparently unstoppable female fighters. Oh. Information obtained in the Sidladian, Sidladian monastery led our scholars to search the royal library for more references to Omad's champions, trying to reinforce the connection with Celestine's hollow maidens. And dead. Dethroned. The king was dethroned. And we don't get any rewards. Because we didn't take uh, for three dilemmas. And there was nothing we could do about it. Do we get these bonuses? Yes. Aha, so we found some sort of exploit. We have a new one. Build a ditch. By the walls. We have small openings and walls through which objects can be dropped on attackers. And we have a warning beacon tower, an advanced alarm system that allows us to quickly inform our allies in case of attack. Do we have allies? I don't think we have any allies. <laughs> but we are going to pick one of them. I think these are all too late. Let's get the fire squad. That's taking one turn and gives us an end thing. You're all still in the council. We do have a lot of money though. Let's get an alliance here with one of them. There we go. Disturbing guests. During her first years at court, Celestina allegedly had a torrid affair with a court scholar named Rilat. Unfortunately, Rilat's diary was stolen, and copies are being sold to the nobles of the court. The holy attendant claims that the diary reveals embarrassing details about Celestina's private tastes and wants to ban it. I don't want to ban it, really. No. Oh. oh no, everyone wants to do this. Really? All the religious ones say yes. Well, let's do it then anyway. As hidden from the public eye, we sent the guards to find and arrest the scandal loving vultures. We sort the affair while a courtier, foreign ambassadors feel more at ease, because they know that it's well hidden from public eyes. Not what I wanted to do, but we have to do something. Ugh. Now in her old age, Celestina suddenly became fatally ill. As she lays in her bed, surrounded by her hollow maidens and illegitimate daughter, the king laments her failure in making him immortal. After a strange spasm, Celestina seems to go mad. Mother, why am I standing there? She says, pointing at her daughter, the librarian chancellor recommends we hasten her death as an act of mercy. Do we mercifully hasten their de her death? I don't want to do this, because maybe something will happen. No. No, we're not going to get anything, she's just going to have so much pain. Celestina is panicking in her deathbed, uttering eerie ramblings. Mother, where are you? What happened to me? Help me, give her history. These delirious invocations of the mother surprise many. Mother, how can I see me standing right there? At this point, her illegitimate daughters leave the room unseen. Probably unable to endure the sight. Ow. A few weeks after the sudden death of Celestina, her daughter comes to court. She is strikingly similar to her mother, and she soon unveils the mystery. Do you recognize me? <gasps> Are they getting reborn in their children? It is I, Sister Celestina, mother of the Hollow Maidens and mistress of the Unending. I have mastered the secret of eternal life. I can renew my by transferring my mind to a new vessel. I'm, stud I'm studying how to apply this process to males, so our king will be immortal as well. 
We shudder when we realize the chilling fate of her daughter's young conscience, imprisoned in the dying cage of her mother's flesh. Oh my goodness. This shall remain a closely guarded secret for now, and most will assume that Celestina's daughter took on her mother's role at court. Wow. We are almost there. No. Two things about the same story. Doesn't matter which one we pick, let's pick this one. A beaming king enters the council room, lovingly holding Celestina's young hand. Sweet Celestina has discovered a way to make my royal bloodline immortal. I am going to marry her and will conceive her royal heir. Celestina is clearly trying to creep onto the throne. She can't be tolerated any longer. We can oppose the marriage by having a declared a heretic and arrested. Do we arrest her and prevent the marriage to the king? <laughs> I like how the council saying no. <laughs> we want to see what happens. <laughs> well, I'm going to pick this one too because otherwise this one is going out. So we are going to let it happen. Sounds fun. Celestina prepares for the royal wedding. The king is ecstatic about her seductive sophistication and her full promise of immortality. Marriage is a magnificent display of elegant opulence. You should expect that Celestina's young smile is the product of many generations of disposable husks. A year after the wedding, Celestina expects a royal heir. Sadly, before the birth, the king contracts a serious illness that forces him to bed. Celestina seems saddened, but takes comfort in ruling in her husband's place. Her daughter? The princess never leaves her, and they are guarded by hollow maidens. Another Celestina will live for a long time, unstrapping the body of her daughter and continuing as the queen, marrying whoever the next aspirant to the throne will be. Many speculate that all subsequent kings of the realm hold little concrete power, acting as mere puppets of their many queens, all looking identical, all called Celestina. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, a few who know the dire truth secretly call her the Eternal Queen. Oh. Okay, we get 50 good points. And the eclipse has been done, guys. What is going to happen? It's all about a, a new Celestina and the Eternal Queen. <laughs> oh god. I like this story. It's uh, it's ridiculous. And I like that. Thanks for watching guys. We are going to continue in the next video. Make sure to like, say something in the comment section. And I see you soon. Bye bye.